So, this is Adam from EcoWise. We're here in the morning. Uh, beautiful sunshine towards the end of November. And listen to the sound of the ivy. Hadrahelix. That sounds strange because you maybe don't think plants make sounds, but all of these insects. They're mostly bees and flies buzzing, 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 feeding on the nectar. Uh, is that the sound of the insects or the sound of the plant? Well, obviously it's the insects, but this is a sound that you hear around ivy at this time of year, and there's a certain smell that I can smell as well. Strong smell. Kind of sweet, but almost a bit meaty. You know, at this time of year, there's not that many things that are flowering. And this is a rich source of food for these insects. But again, if you're limited in thinking about this, you think, well, it's the sound of the bees. But if you see things in a more interconnected way, you start realizing, actually, this is the music of the ivy plant itself. So I'm sitting in this tree and sometimes it's hard to know where the tree begins and I finish because one of the things that causes us so much pain and suffering in our lives is we feel so separate and so disconnected from each other and from our world and we feel so limited and small. And that's kind of sad state of affairs because it's not real. You know, our identity is so limited to think that we're just this little person, maybe in our little family, in our little community, because the reality is we're you know, very existence and our very being is connected to everything else in a big way. And sometimes when you're give yourself the chance to have a bit of space and a bit of time with something like a big old tree. It can remind you of how you're not so limited and small and disconnected. Obviously the trees provide you with oxygen and connecting you in so many ways but you can even feel it emotionally can give you some resilience when things get tough sometimes. You know. This root, this tree's got big deep roots that stabilize it and keep it firm. Even when it's windy and there's storms and during the winter and during the heat of the summer those roots go deep into the mother earth and connect this tree. And we now, we now know that trees connect with other trees through their roots and through the mycorrhizome system and they're communicating and they're totally interconnected it's a forest-wide network total interconnection so when you connect to that you become a part of that process which you are anyway but we've kind of forgotten that and then you've got the branches that reach up into the sky and connect to the air element and again those branches are flexible they move around you know when it's windy they don't stay still they don't stay they're flexible and they're pliable and and they don't necessarily try to resist the wind, they go with the wind. So these are elements in nature that we can connect to, not just through thinking about them, but with our bodies. 
is just spend a bit of time wherever you are with the trees and the organisms that around you because you're part of them and they're part of you and they make you who you are and they're part of your community and when things get a bit tough it's nice to not just look at a tree but listen to the sound of it like we heard the sound of the bees but was that the sound of the bees or was it the sound of the ivy of the flowers that they were feeding on listen to the sound of the tree you listen sometimes you can almost hear I feel the sound of the sap coming up from the roots feel it, touch it feel its temperature feel its texture this is an oak so it's got quite a rough bark but it's it's kind of it's really nice tactile sense it's really nice to feel it and it's got a nice temperature it feels like the same temperature as my body I don't know why I wouldn't expect that but it feels like the same temperature as my hand so connect to the place that you are and the organisms that are there in a deep way why not? It's fun too. Okay. So, cool thing about biodiversity isn't just all the stuff that it gives you, provides you with to keep you alive on the planet, the food and the clean air and all the rest, and the medicine and this, that and the other. It also inspires and informs us in terms of so many other things for instance stories so many of folk tales in Europe and Central Asia and Russia North America so many stories and folk tales and fairy tales involve different ecosystems whether it's going up into the mountains and what happens when you get to the mountains or going into the marshes or canoeing off down the river or swimming to the bottom of the lake in the mist or in Europe we're particularly familiar with fairy tales that involve going into the woods and when characters go off into the woods they um, they leave the world that's known and they enter a world of mystery and magic where the limitations of what they're used to change and the rules of the game change. And still today, one of the wonderful things about biodiversity is it connects us to our imagination. There's so many things that that are new to us and that inspire us and form us, whether it's um, our stories and our tales that we tell can be told in many ways. They can be told in words, they can be told in dance, they can be told through song and music, through sculpture. So many different ways we can tell stories. And if you spend a little bit of time, especially this time of year I get excited by woodlands because at this time of year the leaves have fallen or are mostly gone so you actually start to see perspective and distance because in the summer woods you have the overstory and the understory and different levels but it's off, there's a lot of vegetation there's a lot of leaves so you can't necessarily see very far which is wonderful too but at this time of year you start getting perspective you start seeing further you can actually more chance perhaps of seeing some big creatures running away and maybe you hear it and you see it but you're not quite sure where it is because you can't see it that well and was it a wild boar or was it something else because it looked like it had the body of a person but the I don't know what it was but it was over there I think I think I heard it and you could maybe follow it and maybe you start getting lost in the woods so your your whole idea of what's reality starts to get more exciting and interesting. For instance, look at that. Look at 
I mean, I don't know if you can see what I can see there, but that's a pretty beastie, beastie, beastie. Look at that. I got, I can see eyes, the kind of distorted mouth, and it's kind of a bit spooky. And uh, wow, beginning of a story. What happens if you put your hand inside them? What you would discover, maybe something, a treasure that's been hidden in there. And you had the courage to go beyond the limits of what you know. You had the courage to explore beyond what we're familiar with, to get out of our routines and our habits and our patterns. And that's where stories start to begin.